Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders. Welcome to Fast Track Coaching Ask Dane. This is our 88th or 89th episode, I can't remember which, but we've been at this for a long time. And I'm thrilled to get in this conversation with you guys uh, once a week for about 30 minutes or so. Last week was really fun. I was up in Oakland and had a chance to have Jules and Joy Bianchi Brown on with me. And uh, it was a, a great conversation around uh, getting clients in the door. And today's conversation was actually set to be around uh, overcoming fears of jumping in as a, as a professional creative, uh, especially cultural fears. I know that um, our guest who was supposed to be on today, and I'll say more about Lewis in a second, was Lewis Pang. And Lewis is one of the most celebrated wedding and portrait photographers um, in Malaysia. And in that part of the world, um, I know it can sound a little bit stereotypical and cliche, but according to him, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, people in that part of the world are not exactly encouraged to go into our dis artistic endeavors because it, it's been, it's a, a held belief that if you do that, you're not really being responsible, you're taking high risk, and it's just not something that people look at and go, yeah, that's a really a good idea. Um, and it's funny because in this part of the world here in North America, um, increasingly, especially in a down economy, I'm getting that same kind of feedback that people are saying things like, yeah, if you can get a job, keep it. Um, and there's, there's a prudence and a, a, a reasonable conservative approach in that that makes sense. Like if you have cash flow coming in, my goodness, I would love to have more cash flow coming in. I get why people feel that need. And the idea of being artistic or taking risks artistically to stand out, I get why in other cultures and increasingly in ours, that's so challenging. So the goal was to have Louis Pang join us in the conversation. And the challenge is, I don't know what's going on. I hope Louis is all right. I know it's not the time change only, um, but uh, he has not checked in. And I'm trying to find, oh, wait, wait, here we go. Um, and apparently he can join us in about 15, 20 minutes. So uh, we may just have him on next day because I don't want to waste any time. I want to jump uh, in with you guys and, and get into this conversation really distinct where it's not just about you know me and my guest having a conversation you guys listen in but if you've been at asking for any time in the last little while you know that i'm really big on not being a spectator but being a participant and a lot more of you percentage wise are, are participants i see who you here at christine corinne uh jeff i see you ross shauna tammy harvey there's so many of you guys and uh who, who are saying they're jumping in it's a smaller crowd which also makes it more of a uh, intimate conversation. And, and really what I want to do is just talk about your own honest fears, the things that you feel like you're up against when you, you move forward. And to help start the conversation a little bit, I wanted to um, share with you, not all of you guys have had the chance to take a look at this or necessarily even an interest in it, but um, I did a blog post this week called Beware of the Unorthodox Creative. Beware of the Unorthodox Creative, and it's over at blog.damesanders.com, and I'll go ahead and put the link to it um, here in the chat room for those of you guys who are watching it live. And one second. Um, here's the link. Uh, so if you want to go and take a look at it, you can. But what I want to do is actually start the conversation around this, this bit. I'm going to read it. And then, and then actually start the conversation, uh, see, see what you guys think. And if we could talk back and forth a little bit, that'd be great. If you actually want to join in the conversation live, of course, you can set up your camera and, and I'll pull you on. Uh, the easiest way, though, is to ask questions. Uh, lower right-hand corner of your screen, you should be able to see a little light bulb. Uh, click the light bulb, ask the question, I'll be able to take it live. But I would love to dialogue with you guys about this idea. So um, uh, this, is, this is basically what I, what I wrote, and I'll, just, I'll start it here. Uh, beware of the unorthodox creative. According to Chris Anderson, curator of TED, and if you guys don't know TED, TED is the technology, entertainment, and design conference that it's probably one of the, the biggest kind of, it's changed the whole world when it comes to online presentations. And they're the ones that came up with the idea of an 18 minute presentation exactly. Um, some of the best luminaries in the world have kind of given commentary there. Someone I'm a big fan of, if you guys been around me at any like the time you know, I'm a big fan of Seth Godin. He's actually spoken there two or three times. Um, and uh, it's just a remarkable conference. But the guy who's behind it all, this guy, Chris Anderson, he, he gave a conversation or, or a talk recently about what it means to, what video online means in particular. And he went on to say that online video has the capacity to offer a universal standard for everyone to be able to share and even teach anything online. And 
if you guys have been around online video for any length of time too, you've noticed that most of that is like, if you guys are like me, you get those emails from your aunt, your grandma, your mom, and she'll say, oh, check out this really cool video, and it's of kittens, or, um, or you'll get it from a buddy and it's somehow inappropriate, and everyone gets a laugh in the office, so you'll see not suitable for work, or any of those kinds of things. And I get why it's easy to discount video as purely entertainment, but as that medium has matured, uh, things are beginning to, to change. Um, and he makes the point that before the printing press, in-person connection was the most important means for humans to learn. Um, but then when the printing press came along, uh, for the next 500 years or so, we took on books as the main re kind of resource to learn because the printing press allowed us to scale learning. We could actually write something down in the book like I did with Fast Track, get it out to people, they could buy it, read it on their own time, and everything would be great. Well, online video has the same capacity except for it also now infuses this idea of personal connection. And um, now it's amazing how much can be learned. Like, for instance, on my blog, I put this little clip that Chris actually talks about of this six-year-old uh, breakdancing kid. And, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you ever watch, like, Say so You Think You Can Dance or um, any of those cool shows, it's amazing to see how that as an industry, dancing as an industry, has improved so radically because um, people have been inspired by what's possible and then raise the bar. I remember when I was a kid in high school, um, I was into skateboarding. I remember guys like Tony Hawk and Lance Mountain and these really cool skateboarders, they started making these videos. And you know, at the time, in retrospect, looking back, it was just a bunch of punks taking videos of themselves and all of a sudden like making themselves famous because they put themselves out there. And then people got inspired and came up with really cool new moves and skateboarding moved, improved dramatically in a short period of time. And the same thing is happening with dance, the same thing is happening with cooking, the same thing is happening uh, with public talks even, that's what Ted has done. And uh, I believe that the same thing is possible for even the visual uh, creative professions like photography, where more things can be put on display to inspire people, but also from an educational perspective, more can be done. And, um, uh, and uh, on the blog in particular, I talk about uh, photography is a medium that is long scaled because you know a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, we all know that. But how might photographers leverage this kind of moment to create something that's even more meaningful than what uh, they are right now? Um, so you think about things like Flickr. Flickr came along, uh, and by the way, this week I believe somebody uploaded the five billionth image on Flickr. So you think of how all this influx of new photographers coming in. Um, and everyone's concerned about you know, new photographers, maybe even some of you watching, uh, that you are gonna be this massive threat to the industry. And it's not really, uh, well, I'll, I'll comment more about that in a minute, but it makes sense that so many people are coming in because uh, jokers like me create videos like this and get into conversations. And all of a sudden, people from where they're sitting, wherever they're sitting, can have access to a conversation or a video or whatever that will inspire them to a whole different level of possibility that wasn't there before. It just wasn't. And sometimes it's hard to understand that if you just joined in the ranks, it seems like this has always been true. But you know, you got to remember, the internet wasn't even around much 15 years ago. 1994 was when I got online, or 93 or something, and, and I was an early adopter. There's a lot of folks that weren't surfing the web uh, until the late 90s. And um, that just wasn't very long ago. And you think about how that has transitioned now, you know, everyone thinks of themselves as a professional photographer and, and um, you know, now with other great resources like, you know, DP Review or Photofocus or Adobe TV or, or what you're making in your own backyard or whatever, we're putting these things online and, and it's raising the bar. Now, add to that things like Creative Live, this fantastic resource that offers um, these kind of weekend trainings around different niches in photography, kind of mini workshops online or even uh, Creative Live, which is coming in a couple weeks. Uh, sorry, not Creative Live, Escalate Live, this event that I'm, I'm connected to, um, where you know, for less than 20 bucks, you can get two full days of a conference that would normally cost several hundreds of dollars. In fact, it does. If you want to come to it live, it costs 500 bucks, or you could spend like 15 and watch the whole thing online. Um, um, those kinds of ideas are meant to help expedite or catalyze or kind of move people at a quicker pace than they could on their own. Now, why do I bring all this up relative to facing fears in the industry? Well, I do it because let's, put the, let's connect the dots for a second. On the one hand, we have this idea that 
to in a down economy when everyone it may be it may be a cultural belief let me assert it this way it's a cultural belief that the safe route is to find the sure money and cling to it uh, and I get why people have that experience. I know I do. I feel it all the time, this pressure of like, I just need to generate money, and I'll, I don't care what it is in a down economy, I just need to keep finding ways to do it. And I fall prey to it sometimes, actually. Uh, uh, I have friends who get in my grill when they say I'm too self-promoting or you know whatever, and I get it. Um, I get it and then I don't get it, I should say. But while that's also happening, I'm also keenly aware that this moment in time that we're in presents a massive opportunity that may be the safest bet yet, which is to take advantage of these distribution channels like video, take advantage of, from an educational perspective, to get educated through events like uh, Escalate Live or Creative Live or TED or any kind of online kind of experience. Um, uh, my goodness, you could learn off-camera flash just by going to YouTube and Googling it, and people will tell you step by step, go to strobus.com and see what's possible. Um, but all of these things, to, to leverage those resources to both learn, but also to leverage them to educate, to expedite, on some level, I believe, is, is maybe perhaps the best opportunity. Um, you think back to not too long ago, you know, when the internet was born, uh, little companies, fledgling companies, really, uh, you know, a couple decades ago were companies like um, Microsoft, Apple, uh, these companies that now everyone holds up and goes, wow, they're really amazing. Well, if you do the math on it, you go back, what you discover is guys like Steve Jobs and um, Bill Gates, what they were doing back when nobody knew who they were, was they were logging serious hours in the direction of, of creating a differential where their artistic, their artistic abilities with, in that case, software and hardware, um, and they're developing their vision for those things was actually what gave them this massive critical edge so that as time just happened and the industries began to blossom and emerge, well, huge openings opened up. I mean, massive ones. I, you know, what's Apple worth now, $150 billion? Um, or even, even guys like Mark Zuckerberg. This is great, exciting. I don't know if it's going to be great or exciting, but this movie that's coming out that I'm really excited about, about Facebook on October 1st, and it's going to tell one angle on the story of how Mark Zuckerberg became a, went from college dropout to the, one of the youngest billionaires in history. And, and how did that all happen? Well, it was in the face of challenge when all these, all these people were saying, go be safe. They, these guys believed that the safest route they could go was to really cling to these opportunities and to lean in with all they have. Now, I've often said things like, um, you know, at this kind of a pivot moment, you have two real options. One, you should either quit, which is, there's no shame in it. There's nothing wrong with quitting and going and getting a job or whatever, or lean in with everything you got. Um, you know, figure out ways to lower your expenses, uh, live off of, you know, uh, stains on your tablecloth, like, you know, do whatever you need to do, top ramen. Uh, give yourself the best chance of viability through the lean times, but log your hours. Put yourself in a position to get competitive advantages in the direction that's really going to serve you creatively and professionally uh, so that as momentum catches up, uh, you will have developed uh, a learning curve that other people just won't be able to follow or emulate. It's actually what Seth Godin calls the dip, where if you can get through those dips that other people can't follow you in, you're going to have pretty massive openings. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. Uh, way too much of a monologue here. I would love to, to get a sense from kind of where you're actually at around this conversation around two things. Number one, uh, are you feeling like you're up against it from a risk perspective? And number two, um, what, what is your sense of, you know, this, the times that we're in? Is, is this an opportunity? Uh, is this something that you, you really want to lean into and get after? And, and again, just because you've logged in and I know who you are, that doesn't mean that you're actually a participant. You're a participant when you ask the question or engage in it or even make a statement. I'd love to put, if you don't want to ask a question and you don't really care my opinion on the matter, uh, would you at least click the, the button in the lower right-hand corner so I don't sit here idly by myself uh, and, and type in the text question so I can kind of put it up on screen and we can dialogue a little bit about it. Um, at least that's what I would love to do. So if you're game for that, that'd be great. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going to keep checking back here. If, if Lewis he apparently ran into some kind of challenge that uh, he doesn't, he said, you know, he wrote and he said, hey, I'm really, really sorry. 
I had some problems here. I get online at 4.30. That's in six minutes. So he may join the party and, and we'll be fine. But before he does, I'm, I'm open to not adding him to the call if indeed I can get you guys to engage around this idea of, of are you up against it? Do you see this idea of, of safety uh, being illusory or like it's kind of out of reach? And if that's the case, well, why not do something radical? Why not stand out in a radical way? I, I had a conversation uh, just the other night some of you guys know Jester Rocks, and Jester happens to be in town right now. And and uh, it's funny, he was in town to give a, a concert. He actually came and played music. And and I thought, you know, what a crazy move for a guy like Jess. He's on the top of his game as a photographer, and he's invented this whole beloved series of image image making. And and here he is, a 29 year old, becoming a professional musician. And you know, he's here in LA making a demo tape and doing all these really fun things. And some might look at that and go, well, first off, you're a decade late, buddy. You should have done that when you're 19, not 29. But um, uh, he, he is seeing this moment as actually um, a huge opening. He actually has a background in music. Uh, he's taking advantage of it. And I, I got to see him in concert. And I got to tell you guys, he's onto something. He's, he's logging, while well, everybody else are pining away worrying, he's leaning in and creating more opportunities than he knows what to do with just because he's leveraging his capacity to learn, his capacity to share, his capacity to reach out. Uh, and, and you think about that, if, if the right combination of things fall together in the right place, what, what could open up for a guy like Josh? What could open up for a person like you if you're willing to do it? Now that said, um, I'm looking in the chat room and I'm seeing some people. Uh, well, okay, if you don't, um, I'm seeing a lot of conversations in the chat room, but I'm not seeing many questions that I can pull up on screen. So I'm curious, do you guys want me to just engage the, the conversation in the chat room and respond to that because it's quick and easy? Um, I would rather, rather than doing it that way, I'd rather have you guys put the questions up like some of you guys are now, just so that I can put it on screen for the, uh, the folks who catch this on replay. I think that there's a lot of folks who watch this after the fact and uh, they can't get to the call right now. Maybe they're in a different part of the world. They're not like the brave uh, folks from England who are up really late uh, to put up with this kind of a call. Um, and maybe they're, you know, who knows where they're at right now. Uh, even Lewis, who's he's actually waking up very, very early to be on this call in a few minutes. Um, but uh, I, I, oh, in France, I see you, Hoppy. That's great. <laughs> um, but I'd love to get your guys' uh, feedback and then pull it up on screen for everybody to see. So, uh, Chris Ten, uh, Chris Ten, C H R I S T E N E. Is that Christiane? Is it Chris Ten Chef? Um, uh, I, I, I feel like I know you, Chris Ten, and I'm I don't. I'm interesting. I want to make sure I get this right. But you asked the question, um, how do you change your way of thinking to take those creative risks? And that is a fantastic question. Um, and it's funny, I, I think some of you guys have heard that I, I uh, did this little contest because I'm having, um, I'm doing a free workshop here in, in Newport Beach just in just a few weeks um, for folks who are feeling stuck creatively. And we're actually going to tackle this very viscerally uh, for the for mm, uh, you know ten hours or so together, um, so I'll, I'll give kind of a, a my my take verbally with you, but I, I would much rather do this um, in person. Uh, but let me just say this: How do you change your way of thinking to take those creative risks? Well, let's just talk about this way of thinking first of all. Would you guys agree with me that right now, even as I'm talking? Uh, you're, you may be hearing my voice, but you're also hearing another voice, at least one other voice, and that's the voice of yourself talking to yourself about what I'm saying. Or maybe it's uh, other concerns that you have in your life that are kind of pulling you away. Maybe you have a kid or, or someone that's kind of tugging at your shirt. Maybe you have responsibilities. Maybe you're editing images and you're just hearing these words in the background. Um, whatever it is, you have competing voices, competing stories that you tell yourself. Uh, another way to describe it would be, you know, I could, I can tell you the same story multiple different, multiple ways. Like for example, if you think of a time in your life when maybe something bad, maybe something bad happened to you or someone, someone hurt you or betrayed you in your life, you could look back on that time and ask yourself, gosh, how would I tell the story? What is the, my way of thinking about that moment when I felt betrayed? Well, if you were to tell yourself that story from one angle, which is I was betrayed and here's how, 
uh, and then right after that, forced yourself to tell the exact same story, but this time you had to tell that story from the perspective of the person who you think betrayed you. Now, if that was you, hey, Lewis, I see you there. I'll put you on in just a minute. Glad you're here. Um, uh, if that's you, then you can see how perspective really makes a massive difference in how you see the story you're, you're thinking about. Uh, that if you can somehow get off of automatic or off of the, the, the stance that you're taking and put yourself in a different stance, you literally will see what it is that you're talking about from a different angle. And, and when you do that, there's a shift, there's a leap, there's a jump that can happen where you can believe something new. So let's make it really practical. Let's say, uh, Christian, that you are uh, caught in this idea that the risky thing to do would be something artistic or creative, and the non-risky thing would be, um, uh, how do I put it? Uh, but not the non-risky thing, that, the, that the, the sure thing is somehow less risky. Well, let's look at the exact same. Let's say you got a job that paid you $100,000 a year in benefits, and that felt like the, the, the non-risky thing. Well, in this economy, how, how true is that? Like, how quickly could that job be gone? Well, we know of millions of people, at least in North America and, and well beyond, who thought they had the secure job, and then all of a sudden, they didn't. It just went away. And they were left literally with nothing, no momentum, nothing that they had any control over, and it was all start over. And that's, that's a desperate place to be. Now, granted, it's also a desperate place to be if you're a starving artist right now trying to make it work. But at least in that position, you have some viscer, you have some control. You can do something about it. Like, for instance, if I had no means to, if no one was coming in the door for my photo services or whatever, well, what could I do? Well, I could create other vehicles for revenue. I could, I could in my, without going to committee about it, without making sure I don't break any rules or whatever, I can just create something new. And, and, and what's amazing is, given our times, I can do that for free, largely, online. You know, it used to be you have to create a storefront. Now you don't have to do that anymore. I wonder who's calling. Is that Lewis? I don't know who this is. Um, uh, and, and of course, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, so, so that's one example I'd give, Christian. I'd love to get your feedback on that to hear what you think. Um, but that's my immediate response. Uh, let me take one more question here real quickly. Um, Corinne Northfeller asked the question, I don't find that I have to be safe since I'm new to the pro photo world my first year. Um, uh, and I, I hear what you're saying, that, you don't, that, that makes sense to me. It, it, when you don't have much to risk, it doesn't feel like risk. Uh, but in time, that'll shift, right? Like if you, when your first year turns into your second year and your second year turns into your fifth year, and you know, you, in, like in my case, those things have shifted. I'm in a, uh, the studio with high rent and uh, all these things have accumulated. I, I've taken on challenges and risks and ventures and, and some win and some lose. And in that position, that's going to change. But the more that you can put yourself in a position where it doesn't feel as risky, the wiser you'll be. Some of you guys might remember Melody was on the call a few weeks ago, and she, um, from Sweet and Saucy, and she's seen great success in this year, uh, getting on all these TV shows uh, here in the US. And, and what's amazing to me was what she said specifically, that she put herself in that position by first you know, working from her home, lowering overhead, creating the best possibility uh, available uh, by lowering risk, and that's what gave her the freedom to kind of jump after things. So uh, that's just something to consider as you get into it. Um, now, now, Lewis, who I'm going to pull on here in a second. Oh, wait, we have a video question. Brian, I see you. Um, let me see if I'll confirm you and see if we can get you on here in a minute. Um, uh, oh, yours is a really good question too, Brian, so I really want to, I want to pull it on. So uh, Brian Trombley asks a question, and here, Brian, let's see. How's it going, Brian? How's it going? Uh, very good, Dane. How are you? Uh, very good, Dane. How are you? Very good. Can you hear me? Well, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Very good. Can you hear me? I can. Sorry, a little delay. Sorry, a little delay. Okay. Um, I've been doing this for 17 years, and um, I've hit a wall again. Um, down 25% over last year, which I thought last year was one of my better years. And I'm staring that in the face. And I'm scratching my head and saying, you know, I'm 48 years old. Um, is, it, is it time to say, you know, time to quit? 
uh, you know, you've, you've, you've done it. You, you've outlived your uh, photographic usefulness. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for the call, Brian. Let me answer that now and, and give my feedback on it. And, and I, I so am stoked that you, you jumped on here. And, and I think it's an important question to respond to. Um, my, my immediate, let me actually take care of this real quick. So uh, try and get there. That and then back up. Uh, Brian, because I think, I think we do need to figure out indicators or kind of references as to, you know, when do we quit and when do we lean in even, even further. And the challenge is, of course, that there really isn't a direct indicator. There isn't um, uh, a, a moment where you, it really is you. I mean, that's, that's the gift of being an entrepreneur is you can stand up or not. And there's, I think where people get confused is that somehow quitting is bad and it's not bad. It's, it's just a choice to open up some other possibility. So there really, in a sense, isn't quitting because once you stop doing one endeavor, it just means that you have to get after a new one. And it really is a judgment call. It's an artistic kind of decision. And some people do it because they just get too tired. Uh, some people do it because they, they don't, they've lost vision or confidence that so they can keep going forward. And I got to tell you guys, I mean, I, I face this all the time, all the time. Uh, whether it be with a venture like Escalate Live where I'm super excited and then I'm nervous uh, or my own photo business or, or whatever. And I, I got to tell you guys, I have some fun shifts that are going to be coming even in my own career in the coming months that for some people may feel surprising. For me, I get excited about because I'm catching more vision for it. So I guess what I would say is a couple things. First, Bri, if, if you're in that position, the first thing I would ask yourself is do you have vision for where you're going? And if you don't have vision, I would either go get vision, like get, do some soul searching time and try to come after and get a sense of why, and, and even some feedback about that vision. Like, do you have any kind of reason to be confident that moving forward is going to make sense? Um, and if you do, I, I, I have a hunch that should increase your dissatisfaction with doing anything else that, but that vision. Uh, and if you don't, I, I guess I would tell yourself a different story about what it means if you decide not to do it. Because there's nothing... Uh, inherently wrong with it. It just means that you need to, to, to reframe and get after something new. And you know, it's funny, I'm, I'm actually going to pull on uh, Lewis on here. Now, Lewis, you've been very patient with me for not pulling you on before now. Um, let me see here, I'll make you co host and bring you on. Guys, everybody, this is my friend Lewis Pang. And Lewis, welcome hey, to the show. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. I hope you're well. Uh, yeah, we have some glitches yeah. this morning over here, but we have sorted it out. Very good. Well, Lewis, uh, in case you guys don't know, Lewis is, is tapping in from Malaysia, and uh, he is, like I said at the beginning of the show, he's one of uh, the most celebrated wedding and portrait photographers in that part of the world. And uh, although our, our show will be a little short, and uh, Lewis, I'm going to have you back on the show in the future. I hope that's okay to make up for lost time. Yeah. But um, in addition, I'm to sorry. Your success with yeah. the. I'm sorry. Oh, it's no problem. Uh, your success with the industry, uh, but also with this Creative Asia event that you're doing. And I know I have a chance to come down to Malaysia and yep. uh, Joe McNally's coming down yep. and a bunch of folks. Um, it's, uh, you have a lot going on and you understand both as an entrepreneur and as a, as a photographer uh, just how challenging it can be, especially in your culture, to try to overcome this fear of, of uh, standing out, uh, especially when it's not really celebrated in your part of the world. So I'm wondering if you could just comment for a little bit, because I've been talking for a long time and maybe people are tired of my voice, but uh, share a little bit about about your culture and how it is that you, um, you on a personal level, overcome the concern about not choosing the safe route. Does that question make sense? Yep. Yes. Um, it in in our culture, uh, it's not a um, it's not successful uh, thing to be a, a photographer. It's not the career of cho career choice of for most people. Uh, most people prefer to be an engineer, a doctor, or an accountant, um, a business owner. Uh, being a photographer has not being been looked upon as a wise career choice. Got it. So how have you overcome that yourself? So on when, I level? when I decided to... Well, 
that I, I didn't have anyone that I can look upon to as a, as a role model in my community. Uh, someone who had made it in the photography industry. Um, so for me, is to go outside of my community and trying to find inspiration and find out how people um, made it in other countries. Mm -hmm. So I attended WPPI, DWF conventions. That really opened up my eyes uh, to a, a whole new world of possibilities. I get to see, you know, how people could do this and be really successful. Yeah. See, I love that on so many levels because really what you're saying, if I'm hearing you right, and it relates to the very first question, is you, you had one angle on what's possible, and by literally physically putting yourself in a different position, by going to WPPI or getting in conversations with other people who've been successful, you are now exposing yourself to new ways to frame out what you're doing and that you're getting a confidence yes. that it can be done because you're seeing it done. And that's very much like what people are doing online. Like I was talking earlier on the show before you jumped on how you look at industries like dancing where, you know, dancing, if you don't know, in the creative fields, uh, there's kind of three, three kind of classic uh, groups uh, in, in Broadway or in West End London or whatever. There's like the, there's the actors, the singers, and the dancers. And the people yeah. who work the hardest are the dancers and get paid the least and then the singers, and they get paid the middle, and then the actors who work the least hard get paid the most. But in recent days, because of <laughs> video and these, these online shows, all of a sudden you have dancers who are exploding in terms of talent. I mean, on the Oscars this year, they had that group of, of uh, I think they were called the, the League of, of Incredible Dancers or something like that. And they were all recruited online. None of them were professionals, but they were self-taught based on what they learned online. They saw a vision of what's possible, and they just invented it. And I wonder, even like with the, the folks who are watching this right now, you don't necessarily have to work as hard as Lewis does, where he has to kind of travel multiple countries and get in these conversations with these, these folks. You can actually just take advantage of things like Escalate Live or Creative Live or TED or or cre uh, Creative Asia and, and get a vision for what's possible and actually go and get after it. And would you agree that that, I mean, that it's in a sense, it's a lot easier nowadays than it would be for you to start. Yes. So, so if you were starting out right now, uh, it's certainly a lot that, easier. Uh, easier. Good. Sorry. I, I shouldn't have cut you off. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's still important to be physically at a conference because you you have so many conversations going on outside of the conf conference, you know, on the sidelines, on the uh, food court, uh, when you're having a meal with someone, uh, having a coffee. Those sometimes the most valuable and precious conversations takes place in those places, not necessarily on the conference floor, sitting down on the chair, you know. So I think that even though the internet has given us a lot of opportunities, uh, the the it is also still important to actually go to a physical event and get connected because after all, we are social beings. We need to be around people. We want to be around people. Yes. No, I agree. I, I think that there's a sense in which being with with folks in person, there's no comparison. I guess what I'm really struck by though is let's say that people can't get there that there are increasing opportunities to at least dip your toe and get exposure. Uh, but I agree with you, whether it be, I think Creative Asia is a great example, I think WPI is a great example, and, and even what we're doing with Escalate Live uh, next in a couple of weeks in, in, outside of, um, uh, outside of uh, uh, Chicago is another great example. If you're, if you're in person, it's fantastic, but even if you're not, uh, yeah. to, to get active and creative, to find out uh, to, to give yourself more of a chance for vision uh, in the in the um, chat room yes. there's some conversation about uh, you yes. know, how do you go about getting vision and how do you get help well even just grabbing a friend and having coffee can get you some vision um, you know there's a lot of folks like me and others that, that try to create opportunities for people to to, to learn vision many many of the exercises we're going to do at this workshop I'm going to be doing here in my studio in a couple weeks is around that but um, there's just so much more available if people will lean in and and and, and discover. And when they, people don't do that, I, I'm curious what you think about this, um, Lewis. When people say they really yes. want to do it, 
but then they don't really take action with it. What that tells me is maybe they don't want to do it as much as they think they do. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. And, and yes. I guess what I'm... Uh, as a, as yes. A, go ahead. I think making uh, adjustment and... Well, taking risks and doing something new is always risky and it's always a lot of stress. Uh, putting together Creative Asia is a lot of stress. I, I have to learn to do things I've never done before. But the idea is that when I started out in, uh, as, as a photographer, nobody wanted to teach me uh, because culturally over in, in Asia, um, the people who are very conservative, they tend not want to teach any other people because they look at it as I'm grooming up a competition. So what we are trying to do here with Creative Asia, with some of the teaching initiatives that we are putting together, is really going against the grain of our culture. That we say, hey, uh, there's no big secret. Uh, we're here to share. We're here to, um, we're here to uh, have a conversation. We're here to show you how things are done. Are you still there? Yes, I'm hey guys, here. There's a little, here. Okay, good. There's a little bit of a time delay, and I apologize for, for that, you guys. And, and the other thing I'm just realizing, too, is we, we are kind of going, once again, past my little 30-minute marker. Um, Lewis, I'm wondering if we did another show, is there any chance we can get you back <laughs> on? Because I, I, really like I would really like to get even more uh, in-depth around... Uh, especially around the cultural differences. Like I know even here in the United States, there are folks of various ethnicities and cultures where taking these kinds of risks is, is really frowned upon. Uh, but I, I guess what I'd really love to do is, is yes. really challenge that assumption, um, especially because so many of these people tend to be the ones that are scared to take the risk, but also happen to be some of the most talented people. Like if anyone should take a risk it should be them um, and I, I would just like to challenge that notion uh, in fact even if you're listening in I'd love to to have you think of who do you know that could benefit from a conversation like this where they could reorient their perspective and get off automatic and try something even get exposure uh, to see if this is for them and if they do then um, you know you could invite them to have me to be a part of this and I guess where I get really exhausted is when I think man you know, it was, it was what, less than 10 years ago when I got started and there was virtually none of these resources available to people. And now there's so many resources. When people say like, it's just so hard or I can't do it, I'm like, are you crazy? Like, it is hard, but it's never been easier to learn or to get inspired or to develop a vision. It just seems like not enough people are taking the time and energy to really go and do it. Um, and I, 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 I would just, and, and even yeah. this other thing, like I'm seeing some t chatter in the in the um, chat room where people are talking about different events that cost certain amounts of money, and and I I'm just I'm just amazed. Like, not only is there opportunity, but there's opportunity that scales where you can get it literally for as cheap as free, all the way up to depending on the level of experience you want to expose yourself to, yes. you can invest a lot more than that. And uh, I think yeah. what both of us are saying is, if you're serious, you have to be investing in developing yeah. your vision and going to these things and being a part of them is a big chunk of it. Yes. So would you be willing to come uh, back on the definitely. show in the future? Uh, for me, uh, every year I attend the WPPI. Definitely. I, I mean, it's my fault that I, uh, I missed a big part of this, uh, this show here. It's, uh, I would like to make it up to you and the viewers here. I'm so sorry. No problem. No problem. That's great. Well, let's do this because there is a bit of a time delay, and I want to. I'm going to cut it off uh, right now. But uh, Lewis, thank you for jumping on the call, even though uh, I'll give you a bad time about it later. Um, but really glad we had a chance, and, and perhaps we can Skype a little bit after this is done. <laughs> uh, thanks again to the folks of. Thanks to the the folks of Vocal, and sure. also to uh, uh, Shu Q for uh, providing this for us. Um, but let's let's cut the conversation off here right now. If if there are things that you guys want to engage in. Uh, you know, in the chat room, go ahead and do that, and, and we'll be back again next week. Next week, I'm actually going to have uh, a graphic designer on uh, to help talk about the relationship between design and also um, uh, photography and how we go about our creative process. 
But if this has been valuable for you guys, please be following Lewis Pang, L-O-U-I-S-P-A-N-G, and, and he's regularly offering really helpful feedback on this idea. But I also, um, if, if you would like to hear from Lewis or folks like Lewis, it's really helpful to hear from that from you guys to know. So go ahead and uh, jump on uh, the chat room, let us know that medium, send me an email to dane at danesanders.com. Um, and uh, Lewis Pang's is his Twitter, Corinne, is at uh, Lewis Pang. Um, and, and of course, I, I, I don't mind the affirmations uh, when you send those online, that those don't hurt my feelings even a little bit. So uh, be sure to be uh, signing up for EscalateLive.com. Even the free version, I'd rather see you come for free than not at all, uh, or the $15 version to get the whole thing, or the video on demand to get the whole thing after the fact. Uh, it's going to be an amazing deal, and I, I really hope you take advantage of it. So that's it for now. Thanks, Lewis, for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.